Good morning everybody and welcome to our second Wellbeing Assembly. This one follows on from Mr McConville last week. Um, I'm delighted for the opportunity to lead today's assembly. I think it's so, so important that we still make the time to come together. Um, I think it's it's brilliant to be able to see familiar faces and to be able to hear about all the, the wonderful and, the, and the, the, the good and the fun things everybody's been getting up to. Um, and it's also, I think it's brilliant to be able to take the time now to, to reflect as well around the bits where we found things a little bit trickier, because I think we were all in that boat at times. Um, our plan is that a different member of staff will, will deliver these and lead these each week. Um, so you'll get to see all of your familiar faces soon enough, no doubt. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Allen. I'm the Vice Principal and the Year 6 Teacher at Good Shepherd. Um, what I'd now like you to do is join me in the way that we would normally start our assemblies in school, and that's by bringing our hands together ready to make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my next, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to light our candle the way we would in school. Uh, I'm hoping this is still shot because I think it's really important we can still see this at all times. Um, and obviously we light our candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. And having the candle lit during our assembly shows us that he is present with us. Um, I think it's even more important when times are difficult as they are now that we take that moment to remember that he is still with us. Okay, if you'd now like to join your hands together, we're going to say a prayer that was sort of developed by Pope Francis and it's called the five finger prayer. So as we go through, we're going to start at our thumb and each, each finger is going to be sort of with a different focus. Uh, so we can really sort of hone in on that and it gives us that that, that way to, to think about that person or that group of people in our minds and in our hearts as, as we say our prayers. Okay, so we're gonna start with our thumb. And with our thumb, we pray for the ones we love, our family and our friends. We pray they are safe during this time and they can feel our love from a distance. Amen. We pray for the ones that teach us, guide us and protect us. We pray especially for the key workers and ask God to watch over them as they work to help the world heal. Amen. We pray for our leaders, grant them the wisdom to make decisions that protect us all. Amen. We pray for those who are sick at this moment in time. May our prayers bring them comfort in this time of need. Amen. And finally, we pray for ourselves. We ask God to watch over us and allow us to remain positive and happy during this strange time at home. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now as we move on to our sort of listening and our responding section of the assembly, we think back to last week when Mr McConville shared a story with us, and it was around how different things are. And we have all been asked to stay at home, um, Instead of doing lots of our normal things, like we're not going to school, we're not seeing all of our family, we're not going to football club or to, to our dance lesson, we're not even really playing out with our friends or anything like that, most of us. Um, and that's a big change. And change isn't always easy. Um, but I think part of what we're trying to think about now is how we can try and make those into a positive. It's okay to feel down about them, but how we can turn into a positive. Now, you may have noticed my hair is looking a little bit different and I would never ever normally consider cutting it short like this um, but obviously hairdressers, barbers, everything like that, they are closed at the minute and a, a few of my friends, people I used to play rugby with, they came up with the idea of actually everybody's going to shave their hair, nobody's happy about it, that we can't have our hair cut normally um, but we can turn this into a positive. So they've been raising money for charity and they asked me and, and a few of my friends and actually two of my brothers if they would join in as well. So a few weeks ago, um, this is this was sort of my effort to sort of try and have things and, and, and to try and turn a positive, to turn everything into a positive. Now, as a big, big group, it started with the rugby club. It's, it's sort of captured other local rugby clubs to, to the town of rugby, um, some some people in Coventry, but lots of other people from communities and things like that. And altogether raised £75,000 for the NHS, which is just truly remarkable. Um, and I think sometimes that's just that way of, of us thinking around how a we, we, we don't, we can't always do what we normally did, um, but hopefully just little things like that we can try and find a positive in. Um, now we begin to think around how we're finding staying at home 
and, and just to hear the message that actually it's okay to want to go outside and see your family and your friends. Um, we can't at the minute, um, but it is okay to, to have that real want and that yearn to do so. It, it's also okay to enjoy your time at home. A lot of you, judging by lots of the photos and the videos and the different bits and pieces that have been coming into the school's Facebook site. I don't know if some people have emailed these in as well. Um, it's, it does seem like some of the things you're doing are, are, are brilliant. Um, and I imagine having a world of them, whether that's lots of people making cakes and pizzas, and that's been the other popular one, whether it's been Bella cleaning windows, um, lots of you've had birthdays, I know Elizabeth, a few others, um, and, and it's still finding those times to celebrate, isn't it? Um, but with all this going on, we're going to react. People are going to react in different ways. We're going to have different feelings. And you know what? People are going to have different feelings at different times as well. And that's not just you, that's your brother or your sister, that's even mum or dad. Because this is an unusual time for everybody. Now, today we're going to share a story. And I think all of us will have something in common with the main character we're going to be reading about. And um, she's currently having to stay at home. And she doesn't quite know how to feel about it. But she's learning to find the positives from her situation. Okay, so the story is called Lucy's in Lockdown. It's by Chris Duke. Lucy Pear's hair has turned dark blue today. All she wants to do is go out and play. She's sad, angry, and doesn't understand. Everyone's home in the whole entire land. She has to stay at home and not go to school. Mum tries, to te tries to teach while Dad potters with his tools. It's so frustrating being home all day, but it's important to make this virus go away. Brad is annoying and he's always there. He noticed the change to red in her hair. She looks out and sees the poster go by. Her hair turns green and she understands why. She looks through the window, gives him a smirk. She knows, he, she knows he's out there going to work. She can't help feel jealous, angry and sad, even sometimes a little bit glad. Thank goodness for tech, she thinks to herself. A video chat is good for my health. Her phone rings and she sees Maxi Bear's face. He knows what to say, the same in this case. As it's fine to feel these feelings, I do too. It's important to know it's not just you. The world is going through this together. Remember that it won't last forever. Your mum, your dad and your brother Brad too. They're all feeling the same, red or green or blue. Don't bottle them up, but always shout it. You'll be back to school before you know it. And remember, Lucy, I'm always here. Although not in person, please do not fear. And please don't forget what I always say. It's okay sometimes to have a blue day. Now, hopefully you notice that in the story, whenever Lucy's emotions and feelings changed, her hair did too. Um, and that, it would be a lot easier, wouldn't it, in the world if, if that happened? It, rather, because sometimes it's hard to say. We're quite good when things, when things are going well. We have a big smile on our face. Oh, I'm happy. But sometimes it's really hard to open up and say, actually, I'm a bit down today, but it's okay to, and I think that's, that's what the, the story is trying to get to. Um, and, and we all have days like that, and, and that's me, that's you, that'll be your brother and sister, that'll be mum and dad. And I think it's just really, really important with everything going on that we just take some time to think about how we're feeling, but also to really try and empathise and think about how other people are feeling. Um, this, this book very, very much reminds me of the film Inside Out, um, and that's a way that that I sort of sometimes think about emotions and how and how I'm going to manage them as well. Um, all of these feelings are completely okay. Um, and it's just going to be how we deal with those in this really, really strange sort of set of times. And if you think of how Lucy dealt with them, she did three things. We might not be able to do all three of those things, but hopefully one of those three we will be able to. So the first thing she did, she spoke to her friends. Now, obviously, normally we're going to speak to them at school and we'd be catching them first in the playground or in the classroom or break time or lunchtime. We can't quite do it that way. 
So hopefully some of you will have tablets and things like that where you can speak to them. Um, it might be that actually you've got a next door neighbour or something that you can have a chat to over your garden. Um, it might be that you have to ask your parents, oh, can you give so-and-so's mum or dad a call? Um, so so it's, it's really, really important now more than ever that we stay in contact with our friends. The second thing she did, and I think we can all actually do this, it's hard, but I think we can. She thought about the things she'd actually enjoyed doing whilst at home. And we've seen, as a school, we've seen tons and tons of things on Facebook, pretty much from everybody, but also being emailed in and, and all of those wonderful things, those good things that actually sometimes we don't have the time to do. It's important to remember that the really, really good things. And the last thing she did, she thought about the future. Now, this is, this is a really scary time. We don't know when it's going to end, but it will end at some point and we'll all be back at school and be back with our families and our friends and doing all those things that we love doing. Now, as, as we finish the story, we, this, this naturally leads us into a little bit of reflection and we need to think around the things we missed most at the minute. Now, I'm going to share mine with you. It might be that you want to pause the video and have a, have a discussion with your brother or sister or mum or dad. It might be that you do this yourself at some point. It might be that you do this at the end of today or anything, but hopefully you'll, you'll take this opportunity too. So what I miss most these days, um, I miss my family and it's really hard. Um, I've got a really, really close family. I've got three older brothers. It's really, really hard not seeing them and my mum and dad. And normally at this time of the year, I'd be with my nieces and my nephews. We'd be playing in the garden. We'd be all catching up. We'd be going outside doing lots of things. And it's really hard not to do those things. I miss school and everybody in school and seeing everyone on the playground. I particularly miss my class. Um, and year six at this time of the year, we'd be preparing for SAT. And, and the, but it's, it's a real together time of the year and it's, it's hard not to have that. I miss all of my friends and being able to catch up with them. Um, I miss there not being any sport on TV or down at the park or at the rugby club and things like that. And that, that sort of makes things a bit tricky. Um, and for those of you who know me quite well, I'm quite missing my Starbucks and my Costa. Um, it, that's a little bit difficult. I, I think I've got over my caffeine kick, but it's, it's hard. Some of those things that you really enjoy and look forward to, it's hard not to have, isn't it? Hopefully you'll be able to think about some of those things for you too. Um, while at home, I'm learning and enjoying and think about what those things are. Um, I'm learning French again. The last time I learned French was when I was at school doing my GCSEs. I won't say how many years ago that is, but it's a little while. Um, I'm using an app called Duolingo. It's a free app, so any of you want to try that, it's a really good one. Um, I'm learning some new bits in, in the garden in terms of gardening. Never thought that would happen. Um, learning lots of new recipes. Some of that was when we didn't have all the food supplies, but some of that is just sort of to keep things interesting. Um, I'm learning to play table tennis. We've got a table tennis in the garden. We're quite lucky that way. Um, so I'm learning that. Um, and I'm really, really enjoying having a bit more time in my hands and being able to sit and read. I've just finished one book. I'm just starting my next one. Um, so that's been the things that I've really, really sort of enjoyed and, and, and sort of new things I'm picking up. And finally, our final reflection is what we're looking forward to when this is all over. And I sat for a little while and I was thinking and, and I could picture very, very clear things in my head. And there were three that jumped out to me. Um, the first was I could almost imagine being on the playground at break or lunchtime and just seeing everybody running around. And this gave me a chance to sort of see people from different year groups to see the, the year twos all playing TIG and see um, some people playing basketball and netball and football and just lots of the different bits going on and around. Um, and all, I pictured all the staff out there and, and things like that. And that was that was a really nice one to think about looking forward to. Um, I look forward to having going to Starbucks with all of my family and us all sitting around the table in the sunshine, in the one in rugby that's outside, um, and just being able to have a good old natter and a catch up and see everybody and whatnot. Um, and, I, and I look forward to sort of having a big catch up with all of my friends too. And I think they're the, the three bits that, that I've always that I keep looking forward to and that I hold on to. Um, and it would be brilliant if you could think about some of these things too. And, and actually we're asking everybody across all of the schools in Romero, if there was a way that you could sort of almost draw this or, or a piece of artwork to show this. Um, again, as always, we could get this post on the Facebook site, maybe even the school website. Um, and I think hopefully that would just be a, a really nice release for lots of us. Um, so our final messages are, are these, that I think that bit on, on the screen there is, is hugely important. To remember that we're all in this together 
I know we're not coming into school every day. We're not all seeing each other's faces. We're not all hearing each other. But actually everybody is feeling the same. Everybody's going through the same things. So those times where you feel a little bit uncertain, other people are feeling uncertain as well. And hopefully together we're all stronger and we, hopefully this we, we can all get through with that thought. Um, obviously we will be doing the assembly as well next week. Um, I think it's Mr Kirby coming up. Um, and there are also some, some activities here that can just help keep us positive. Um, I hope that everybody stays safe. I hope you keep sort of finding the ways to enjoy yourself. Um, it's For me, I love seeing all of the pictures and the videos of baking, of looking after brothers and sisters, of a real, real quality family time together. Um, so please, please, please keep those coming in. Please stay safe. Please stay happy. Um, and we will see you all soon, no doubt. Thank you very much for listening to the assembly. Um, we'll see you all very soon.